Today we're going to talk about the power of the three L's. Live, love, learn. Yes, we have one life to live, one chance at this game, one round to play. There is no second round. There is no second chances. You have one life to live, one round at this life that you call this thing you called life. And you got to live it to your best. We could look around us and we see all what's happening as a result of, of the corona pandemic and we see clearly that we need to do what we, we have called here on earth to do. You're here on a mission, you're here on a purpose, and there's a purpose indwelling within, indwelling within your heart, a, a purpose that's embedded there, a purpose that's there that you need to pursue, that you need to get done. You need to go out there and live that life that you are sent here to live. A life that will benefit and a life that will, will add value to the lives of many people around you. And we all sense that urge within us to grow. We all sense that urge within us to go out there and be all that we can be. I know a lot of times uh, so people will try to, uh, to put me into a box and I don't feel comfortable in a box. You see, you cannot fit an oil tanker into a lake. A lot of times people will try to fit your potential into a lake and you cannot fit into a lake. An oil tanker belongs on an ocean. An oil tanker belongs in a vast space. So you see, as you look at your life, don't just look at just your immediate circle of influence expand your influence, connect out to other people, connect to other countries, connect, stretch forth your hands as far as you can so then you could impact as many lives as you can. Time is short and in this short time we need to go out there and impact as many lives as possible. We need to transform the lives of as many people as possible and that's truly the way we live. We gotta go out there and be all that we can be. We gotta go out there and pour out of that potential that we have inside of us so everyone around of us could experience that potential. We gotta go out there and equip each and every person in a way that we are desiring and in a way that we are called to equip them and then go out there and shine. We got to go out there and live. Live. You know, we wake up so many times and we wake up, you open your eyes in the morning. You will be amazed as to how many people who didn't get a chance to open their eyes in the morning. So you see, as you open up your eyes in the morning, you go out there and you tell yourself, I am going to live. I'm not going to live with hostility or bitterness or, or strife or anger or, or resentment. I'm going to live out of a life full of grace, out of a life full of love. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to transform other people's lives. I'm not going to let people's bitterness, people's unforgiveness, people's jealousy hold me down, but I'm going to literally take the proverbial scissors and I'm going to cut that cord that's trying to strap me to the ground and I'm going to soar into the sky like a, like a balloon and I'm going to soar and I'm going to soar and I'm going to soar and I'm going to be all that I can be because I am going to live. We need to live. We need to go out there and be all that we can be in this world. L number two, love. I've learned so much about people over the past three months. I'm a people watcher. I like watching people. You always hear me say, I don't listen to what people say as much as I look at their actions. And it's amazing over the past three months, the, tra the, the, the kind of image that a lot of people portray when, they, when they're going through tough times. I remember once hearing a renowned motivational speaker sharing the fact that, you know, if you really truly want to know the type of personality somebody have, see how they deal with losing their luggage at the airport while traveling. 
And that's exactly what I've seen over the last three months. I've seen how people react when they're uh, boxed in, how people react when their political views are stepped on, how people re react when they think that certain things are being threatened. Instead of acting out of love, a lot of them just act out of sheer hatred. You know, and it's amazing because when you look at it, you will think that if you have a honeycomb and you squeeze it, the harder you squeeze it, what should come out of it is honey. So we should be living such a life that what comes out of us, even if people are squeezing us, should be love. You see, the good book said, Beloved, let us love one another because love is of our creator and he that loveth not knoweth not our creator because our creator is love. So you see, as we get to know our creator, his characteristics should be flowing out of us. So we should be almost like that of a honeycomb. So when people are squeezing us, what flows out of us is love. And if that's not the case, then we all need to read revisit that fountain. We all need to revisit that fountain and be washed. Washed of our, 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 our ill way of thinking. Washed of our anger and bitterness and strife and hatred. And be drenched with love so that we could even stand up for what we believe but do it in love. We could even speak the truth in love. You might ask, how do I speak the truth in love? I'll use an example. I'm in a restaurant and all of a sudden a waitress came over and she, I ordered a steak and she brought the wrong steak. And when she brings the wrong steak, the steak is well done and I like my steak medium rare. You know, the, the waitress comes over and as the waitress comes over, I said, excuse me, ma'am, the steak that I ordered was medium rare and you brought me a steak that's well done. I firmly understand that you're having a bad day today and I firmly don't know what's going on in your world because there's so much things to go on, going on around you and I understand that. Is there any way whatsoever you can correct my order and bring me a steak that's, uh, that's medium rare? And I smiled and I look and say, Thank you. I really appreciate you. You are doing an awesome job. You see, when we speak the truth in love, you see, we get more things done. A lot of times in life, we minister more to people in hard times than in good times. And a lot of times we are tested through hard times and we fail miserably. That's where the third L comes in. Learn. We got to always learn, learn from the circumstances, learn from what's going on around us. We can't be too rigid that we can't take advice or take cues or when somebody question what we're doing to hash out at them or to go up on our little poop, uh, 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 pit, uh, uh, um, uh, soapboxes, you know, social soapboxes, Facebook or whatever, you know, and we go on our soapboxes and we bully these people with what we say or what we do. We have to be able to learn. We have to be able to adjust a lot of times, there's a lot of things that I have to learn. I learn every day. I will be a life learner. I'm always learning. And there are things that I cannot do. And I have to learn them. You feel frustrated, but you have to learn. But you have to be able to receive correction and grow. And that's the whole idea of learning. And that's what we see here. We have to learn. You're looking at a pandemic. You're looking at all what's going on. Instead of being hateful and bitter about it, think, how can I work alongside it? How can I set up my systems and, and operate with it still there without it even bothering me? What steps would I have to put in place to facilitate a forward movement and keep moving forward? How do I need to change my, my company? How do I need to change my work? How do I need to change my work environment so that everything keeps going? How can I take advantage of the key changes that are happening to virtually will catapult myself forward. You see, we don't, I'm not saying, we should never move in fear. 
We should never move in fear. But as we move, we have to always move forward. We can't sit and squabble with each other. We have to come up with colossal decisions and colossal strat strategies in order to move us forward. When a bucket is running empty of water, you better think twice because <laughs> you either could not turn on the faucet and fill it up with water or you're not going to have any water and you're going to go thirsty eventually. So we need to fill that bucket up with water because then we're going to go thirsty. So we have to get out of our heads and learn to learn. Learn to work with what's going on around us. So then we could position ourselves more strategically for the future. Go out there and have an awesome growth day. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the subscribe button below. Hit the subscribe button below. God bless you.